All right, everyone. Welcome to another fun and exciting iTrack support webinar. My name is Tom, and we'll be doing a four-part series on iTrack forms building. We're going to focus on the basics. Um, we have a lot of customers that are interested in building their own forms, but just haven't had the opportunity to dive into it or are intimidated by some of the difficulties inherent in forms building. So these four sessions will uh, give people uh, some introductory information regarding what's involved, and then we'll probably do other sessions at another time that focus on uh, more complicated and more involved buildings. Uh, so let's begin with a little bit of um, eye track and dynamics navigation. So in order to be able to do forms building, you do have to have some sort of administrative privileges. So if right now, if you don't have access to dynamics, that will be the first thing that you have to um, resolve. So for here's an example of different dynamics in instances that we have access to. And so we would have more than the average user and uh, for people that are unfamiliar with this, do please talk to either us or to um, your Dynamics Administrator. So in any case, um, we'll log into one of the instances that we have. And in this case, it's called the iTrack 365 Hub. And within the Hub, this is where access to all the Dynamics tables happens. So in here, you'd be able to see uh, what you have access to. If you've only got access to one app, and that's fine. If you do your own dynamics development, you might see um, access to those different applications. But in this case, we're only going to focus on the iTrack 365 side within Dynamics. So once you've resolved access to Dynamics, um, you would then see all your navigation on the left-hand side. So in here, we do have a um, an option dedicated to forms, but your security might be set up differently. So you might see some of the other different dynamics bits and pieces under different options. So again, depends on what you have as far as security and permissions. So check that out on your own end. And if you have difficulties, do let us know. We can help you out with that. And we're going to spend the majority of our time within forms. So if you're not familiar with the navigation, this menu does collapse or expand as needed. And over the course of these four sessions, you're going to see us uh, going into a couple of these, but most notably forms, form tasks, form types, form business units, uh, form inspections, and a couple other things. So for the purposes of today's session, we're only really going to for focus on form types. So one of the things that we first like to point out is the difference between forms and forms types. So most people think they to create a new form or to build a new form, they have to go to forms. But what actually forms are is all the forms entered by the users. So whether your users are entering forms or process flows through the mobile app or through portal, they all end up here in this uh, forms table. So as you can see, there's different form numbering. You'll see the name of the form. You'll see the date that it was entered and then, you know, due dates and assigned to users and all the other information that's being captured against the form. So this is sort of the end result of the form being built, published, uh, and filled out by users. So if you're building a new form, you're actually going into form types. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into form types. And in here, you'll have different views of forms that are active, inactive. And then if you've got other uh, views or filters um, set up on your own end, you'll see those um, various options there. So for the most part, when you're building something new, you're in active form types. And then if you're deactivated an old form that you don't use anymore, then it would be under inactive. And you'll see the key thing here is really the name of the form. So if you're not sure if a form has been attempted or it's currently being built, you go through here and you look for it. You can also search for forms. You can search for uh, names. So if somebody's created a form that's called test, if I type in test, you'll see that anything with the term test does come up. So this will be uh, your first starting point and all the other dynamics navigation that you might be familiar with, such as looking uh, under it alphabetically or uh, sorting in ascending or descending by the various columns. That all stays the same. Uh, hopefully you're used to that type of navigation. So we'll jump in and we're going to click the plus icon to get us into the new form type. So 
this is the shell and we will refer to it as the shell for the rest of these sessions. Um, it is the beginning point where you have to create as your starting table to then be able to build onto it. So anything that you see in the field with the red asterisk is required and everything else is optional and just variably controls what you see and don't see. So we will just begin or something we're going to call this our form test. Um, I don't believe we have one in there called test yet, so that will suffice. And then the other question it asks for is a form group. Now, groupings correspond to what people see in the uh, in the app or in the portal. So, for example, I'll jump back over to uh, the portal instance of iTrack 365, and I'll click on forms. And as soon as it loads, you'll see that it uh, gives us different headings or different groups. Here we go. So you'll see that the categories of health and safety, environmental, HSE forms, sustainability, et cetera. If you expand those sections, you will see the different forms underneath them. So that's the group that it's referring to. So in this case, you can do a couple things. You can either search for all the groups that are there and it'll bring up what's already there, or you can click new form group. So for example, um, if you look at your pre-existing options and you don't see one that qualifies where you would like to drop in this new form, um, you can go ahead and build one from scratch. And if I quickly click on that, doesn't like that, okay. Let's just select test, I'll make it easier, okay. And now that we've selected those two, it will allow me to save and not throw up an error message. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to confirm that. There we go. It's all saved. So now, at the very least, you won't lose this unless you delete it. And now let's go through all the options that you have uh, down this row um, and tell you what they all do. So unique reference is rarely used. It's uh, designed for basically scripting. So if you need to do some custom options that are specific to um, this type of form, such as in maybe email notifications or generating custom workflows. Uh, you can create a unique reference that you reference in, in if conditions. Um, again, not a lot of uh, customers use this. Next is an auto numbering sequence. So most of the time, people don't care about what the underlying form number is. So the, the built-in um, options that are there, such as the one that's iTrack form, uh, would be sufficient. It simply generates the next number up um, in the sequence. But if you needed to build a new auto numbering sequence, that would have a certain next number as a starting point and a certain prefix and a certain limitation on length. You can build that in first and then attach it to the form in question. So if you wanted all your forms to start with a letter A, you'd make that the prefix. And um, the next number up, let's say you wanted to start out uh, after 55 because you've already manually entered 54 forms in another system or in a paper system, that's the way you go about it. Okay. So again, you can either use uh, what's there or build a new one to match whatever you need uh, for form numbering. Risk matrix, uh, you wouldn't typically do this at the beginning of form building, but we do have a feature um, in forms buildings where you build a risk matrix first and then attach it to a particular form. So this would be one of the things you would typically not build dynamically. You would build uh, the risk matrix first and then build the form to go around it. Or if you have the same risk matrix on different forms, again, you build the risk matrix and then attach it to the different forms. Or if you change your risk matrix, like in the future, you can then go back to the forms and adjust it that way. Okay. Next, the due date interval. So there is a pre-population of a field uh, where the due date is one of the options. And if you enter in something like seven, it will then pre-populate it seven days out. And then the form task interval is similar where there is a feature called corrective actions or actions that you take against a form. So if you imagine something like a safety incident, you then have to correct a problem and then you can include a due date default uh, for that as well. So these are defaults, they're not hard coded, so when the form is generated, you can alter those if needed. 
form task time. Um, this is not typically used. This is if you wanted to have this form and the task within it appear on timesheets within functionality, timesheet functionality and dynamics. So most of the time that can be left to know. Uh, link task to cause. So this is again, this is something you don't typically do at the beginning because it's related to a functionality called cause analysis. And we wouldn't do this in our uh, simple four part series on form building. So that could stay as no. Uh, show, save, and close. So similarly to how there's save and close in Dynamics, uh, we have save and close options on the iTrack forms. So typically that's an okay option on Windows. And then if you don't like that option, you can say no here and it doesn't appear throughout the form. Show in form progress. So this is an, another one that's not typically used, but if your form has fields that need to be completed, uh, this would tell you uh, the running percentage of the form within the form itself as you're filling it out. So I have seen this a couple of times with not a lot of times, so leaving it no is okay. And then show as timesheet is similar to um, the option above here with form task time. Um, again, if you're using timesheet functionality and dynamics and you want this form to show up like a like an entry on the timesheet, you would select that. But typically that's not the case, so that's no as well. Uh, show on employee. Um, there's an option uh, for certain forms to be a link to employees like a, a self analysis or something along those lines. And uh, if you are creating this form for that purpose, then you would want that to be related. But if this is not something that's um, related to the employee and is a generic analysis, uh, a generic process form or process flow, you don't need to show. And so do not show is the correct option. Another option that we see in some of the forms is uh, a classification selection. So that's either single or multiple selection. So let me show you what that means. So if we um, have an option such as this where it's a healthy and safety incident and within one of these um, pre-selections or pre-qualifiers you can only select one or two options uh, that's the selection here so if multiples are allowed you say multiple if multiples are not allowed and you just leave it on singled and uh, the period date so the period in which the form is created what does it set that to uh, so you can you have the option of either occurred date or reported date. So when it occurred versus when you said it was occurred and this plays into reporting. So it really just depends on how you report on your forms. So if you're entering a lot of things after the fact, then maybe reported date is the way to go. But if you're reporting a lot of things in real time, occurred date is probably the preferred option there. OK, uh, last couple of things to mention. So the description field. is for external and the comment sections for, is for internal. So the external can be exposed uh, on the forms itself or in other places like reporting and comments are just for internally identifying um, stuff that you know you want to leave information for yourself or your teammates or coworkers regarding the form itself. OK, and the timeline we won't talk about and then the following sessions will deal with form sections. So there's only a couple things left to show you. Um, if you've got uh, multi language capabilities turned on to the your dynamics instance, you will see a tab here for translations. So if you're doing, you know, English, French, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, whatever, you'll be able to link things that way. But if you don't have multi language set up, you won't even see that. And then under related, you'll see all the other things that are connected to this form. So in here right now, we're not going to jump into any of these, but in some of the following sessions, we might show you uh, where some of these things are connected to the form. So uh, things like teams, things like statuses, um, those are all connected to the basic shell that we're creating. A um, couple quick things and then that's it. So along the top row, you've already seen save, save and close. If you need to create another form from here, you can. If you need to deactivate it, you can. Uh, if you for sure don't need it, like you made a mistake and this form has never been used by anybody, then you can delete it. Um, if you've got something that's you think a field is an updating, click refresh and we'll do that. And then all the other things are really not terribly important until we get over to show ID. 
and the, what this shows is a system generated ID for this form that we just now created. So if you're ever doing any Power BI development or um, Power Apps development flow, something like that, this is where some of these IDs might come in handy. But otherwise, um, for the general uh, user, that's not something they would see. There's a couple things behind the ellipse. Uh, we'll come back and talk about this in future sessions, but there is the ability to reorder sections and, and um, status types. Uh, we don't have to worry about those now, but they are there. And the very last thing that we'll mention before wrapping up the session is the status of your form. So for now, because we're just working on it and it's not visible to anybody, it sits in draft. And then once we're ready to uh, make this visible to people, then we will publish it. So at this point, for uh, part one of four of our um, form well, Forms Building 101, that's about it. So if people have questions, they can ask, uh, follow up on email to support at itrack365.com or just come back for parts two, three, and four to find out more about the process. So thank you for your time. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. See you again.